Palantir shares have been on a tear this year. The stock up just around 40% since the start of the year, driven by excitement surrounding the AI boom. In an exclusive interview with Yahoo Finance, Palantir CEO Alex Karp discussed the company's AI platform and ultimately what it means here for customers and investors. Take a listen. What they're going to find is the large language model is much more like a chemistry experiment, the outgrowth of which is a something that is useful when refined, where we impose the logic of your business on the large language model in the security and intellectual logic of your business. And this is transformative. And what it means for investors and others is there is value in this market. People, you can identify where the value is very easily. Joining us now, we want to bring in Brent Thill. He's a Jeffries a senior analyst. Brent, it's great to talk to you. So taking a step back here, when you take a look at Palantir shares, they're up just around 40% since the start of the year. Lots of questions just around the hype surrounding this stock. Clearly, it's been a wild run for some investors. I'm curious just your take on the current position of Palantir right now. I believe you still have a hold rating on the name. Yeah, good morning. Uh, fundamentals are, are obviously improving at Palantir. Uh, what holds us back right now is valuation. It's the single most expensive name in our coverage universe. Uh, so great companies with great uh, momentum uh, sometimes are look expensive uh, on the opportunity set. And we, we obviously believe the opportunity set is enormous for Palantir and AI. Uh, but we believe there's going to be better entry points for the stock. Uh, the fundamentals, they've done a really nice job. You know, the beginning of last year, for basically 75% of the year, they didn't produce anything. And then in Q4, things started to turn. They really cleaned up all the, the bad execution uh, last year in Q4. And then in Q1, they had a really good number. So you've had two good quarters. I think they got in front of the AI uh, wave better than others. Uh, clearly, AI is really an infrastructure. If you look at what's happening with NVIDIA and all the other names, it really hasn't come to the software layer. Um, Palantir is bucking that trend. They have seen great momentum uh, in in their suite, and customer adoption has been has been good. So give them credit where credits due. They're doing a f fantastic job there. But uh, again, you go back to multiple being the the single richest name in in software. So you have valuation risk right now. You, you don't have fundamental risk. Fundamentals are are really good. Yeah, it, I mean it's particularly interesting too when. We hear Alex Karp talk about the biggest use cases and, and how important their company is and their estimation or calculus for what they believe the world could move towards, unfortunately. And, and it, it really is trying to figure out which governments, which companies are best trying to position themselves if we do see even more geopolitical tension. How much of that can be part of the, the thesis into why Palantir would succeed rather than other factors? It, it helps. So, you know, half their business is government, half of it's commercial. Uh, the commercial business is doing really well. The government business isn't doing as well, but is 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 still a, a, a bright spot. Uh, and so certainly more tensions, you know, you effectively need software to effectively do scenario planning, to do disaster planning, to un understand, uh, you know, w what assets you have, where they should they be, uh, so they've always thrived, you know, in in that uh, in in that that part. I think that the ch the challenge for investors on the government business is one: it's hard to really talk to the CIA or whoever has the software to really actually see what it's doing and does it work, right? So what we've said to investors is the government business is really difficult to analyze because it's hard to talk to most of those governments. They don't want to talk to anyone about how they're using it. It's very secretive, so you effectively cannot predict what happens in the government business. On the commercial side, we can do a better job of that. And I think that's where we're seeing great success. United Airlines, uh, a handful of the other great case studies that they're getting, you're, you, th those are real case studies around supply chain, aircraft maintenance. Uh, they're doing a really nice job there. So the government business has been, in in, in, in our opinion, it, it's 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 gonna be a great, it's great, but uh, you're really gonna be able to do the work in the commercial business and the commercial inflection is happening. I think this is the area that needs to continue to improve because the government piece is just unanalyzable. You don't know when it lands. They're big deals. You don't know when one country is going to buy the product or another. And they're they tend to be massive deals. They tend to not you know be little deals or they're huge deals. So when they land, um, it's just it's difficult on timing. 
Uh, so no, no doubt it will help them. And I think their position in AI and the success stories that they're getting now are really going to be what's going to keep investors really excited, which is when they launched this company, it was like when Musk launched uh, the, the Tesla. It was unaffordable for 90% of the population. Now nurses and interior designers and accountants can buy the, the Tesla because they brought it to the mass market. And Palantir is bringing this now to the mass market. That's what is exciting me the most. At the beginning, it was really built, again, for special people uh, that have special budgets. And, and now they're, they're trying to effectively change that by saying, hey, you can go into a boot camp. You can buy this product for your supply chain. You can get it up and going in, in a, a month or two, get value, and then build into it if, if you get success. Um, that's a great call. We love that strategy. That's the same playbook that Elon Musk ran. Uh, so, you know, hats off to them. Uh, you know, we missed part of the move in the stock, but but I also think, you know, you can be patient given given some of the valuation concerns that we have. All right, Brent, fair enough. I, I, I want to switch gears here just a bit and, and talk about Microsoft because we have regulators here continuing to crack down on big tech. Now the DOJ and the FTC reportedly planning probes into NVIDIA, OpenAI, and Microsoft. But let's focus on that Microsoft part of it here because when it comes to your coverage here, the questions surrounding regulators and an impact that that is going to have here on some of these larger cap names and, and Microsoft's uh, partnership with OpenAI already facing probes uh, overseas in the UK and the EU. How big of a risk do you see this as a risk here for the company? I don't see it as a risk uh, oh, no. at all uh, because all regulatory overhang concerns have always been bucked by big big cap tech. If you were worried about Meta or Google or Amazon or Microsoft, you missed the picture. You missed it. And none of these issues have been an issue. The regulators do what they do is to protect you and I as consumers. And um, it's their job to investigate. Uh, ultimately, how Microsoft and these companies deal with it, I think, is, is the important thing which is they're adding value to how we work every day. And if they did it in a legal compliant way, uh, then there's no issue. So um, I, I don't see an issue. There hasn't been an issue and the, the playbook in tech is on the best tech names, regardless of what regulatory overhang there is, and that's worked. And that's been my thesis for many years, and I think it's worked. Um, so now in the age of AI, I'm not sitting here saying, you know, things shouldn't be regulated. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, we should have clear laws and rules, but you can't regulate when there's no rule book. And this is, goes back to when Facebook was $100 a share and Zuck got investigated. And I'm like, there's no playbook or no rule book. So don't make up the rules on the fly, set the rules, and then if they don't follow them, then they're in trouble. But you can't make up rules in AI when there is no rule book, right? So we need a rule book. We need regulation. We need to protect all of us. And I think ultimately Microsoft is a company for the last 20 years I've covered. They only wanted to help consumers. They're not gonna launch something that's gonna hurt us. It's it's gonna help us. So as long as they follow that playbook, we're fine. Keep owning these stocks. Any regulatory uh, pullback in the stocks, you, 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 buy, you buy the weakness. All right, good to hear that Microsoft is not gonna hurt me going into the weekend. Brent Thill, Jeffrey, senior analyst. Brent, great to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks.